What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at how to set up and configure PowerShell remoting from a Windows machine to a Linux machine. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you already have SSH and PowerShell Core configured on your Linux distribution. The way that you do that could be different than the way mine is set up depending on your Linux distribution, so keep that in mind. So with that said, let's get started. If we take a look, I'm currently on a Windows 10 Professional 1903 machine and I have PowerShell Core version 7 installed. I'm going to split my terminal and I'm going to SSH over to my Linux machine to show you some information on it. So if I run NeoFetch, you can see that I'm running Arch Linux. I also have PowerShell Core installed on my Linux machine. So if I were to try to invoke a command through PowerShell from my Windows machine to my Linux machine currently, let's see what happens. So we'll do invoke command host name script block and we'll try to run neo fetch here. Type in the password, and it failed. So we've got some configuration to do before this is going to work. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the .ssh folder in my home directory on the Windows machine, and I'm going to generate RSA keys so that I don't have to type the password every time I want to invoke a command against the Linux machine. So the way that you generate RSA keys for your SSH connections is by doing the following command. You do ssh-keygen, and I'm gonna take the default file and folder location, and it's gonna ask if I wanna use a passphrase. It's more secure if you put a passphrase on the key, but for this demonstration, I'm gonna skip that. So if we take a look now, I have two new files. I have a private and public RSA key in my .ssh folder. What I need to do is I need to transfer the public key over to the Linux machine and get it added to the authorized host file. So if we go over to the Linux machine and if we go look in the SSH folder, I have one file called authorized keys. If I take a look at that file, it's empty. So let me come over to the Windows machine and transfer the public key over into that .ssh folder on the Linux machine. Go verify that the file transferred and the file transferred properly. So what I need to do is I need to append the contents of the id underscore rsa dot pub file into the authorized keys file. So I'm going to do that with this command to append it. And once that's finished, I can get rid of the public key file. I don't need it anymore. So now we have our authorized key file on the Linux machine populated with our public key that we generated over on our Windows machine. So if we go back to the Windows machine now, and let's try that same command. And you can see this time we weren't prompted to enter a password because it used our RSA key for the connection, but we still don't have PowerShell remoting working quite yet. So let's go back over to the Linux machine and let's go into Etsy SSH. And there's a configuration file called sshd underscore config that I need to modify. So let's do that now. So what I'm going to do is 
So I searched for subsystem and I'm gonna add another subsystem line to this file. So subsystem PowerShell. The path to the PowerShell core binary on my Linux machine. Use SSH. No logo, no profile. I'm going to save and exit that file. Now what I need to do is I need to restart the SSH services on the Linux machine so these changes will take effect. So let's do that now. And let's hop back over to the Windows machine and let's see what happens when we run that command again. So you can see now we were able to invoke a command against the Linux machine properly. And we ran NeoFetch remotely and it come back with the results. And you can see the NeoFetch is returning from the machine Arch Linux. So hopefully this little tutorial was helpful to you. I want to thank you very much for watching. Take care.